boys and girls. It is, uh, I don't know what the date is. Anyway, it's after work. It's Friday. Race weekend. Thank God I'm home. And I'm out back uh, dinking with my Gap Challenger antenna. And it's nice and cool. 66. Hence my hat and my flip-flops. <laughs> but uh, I have tentatively, it's not set in deep, obviously. I'll wait till my brother comes over tomorrow and one of us will hold the 2 by 4 and the other will bang it down in. It's not level either. But uh, I've got the base in, the tilt-over base from Gap. And my Gap Challenger is up. All 32 foot of its glory. And uh, I think, like I said, I'm second or third owner. I'm not real happy with some of the stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a really nice, beefy... Uh, check out the size of the angle iron. It's all aluminum uh, on that. I, and I'm still missing... Uh, I'm still missing a wing nut somewhere. Uh, top, top. Anyway, it's pointless. Oh, it's because... That's why I'm missing... Da, 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 brain damage. Because it's supposed to be missing because of this. But anyway, I think I told you the other day, or I may not have... This is the temporary uh, bolt here that you slide through while you're disassembling this one here if you want to tilt the thing over. So you slide that in, you take this out, and then you can tilt it over, or when you're bringing it up, you put this in temporarily. But this is, um, and I love my gap guys, but this is cheesy shit because there was no wind blowing. And my 32-foot pole was just waving a little bit. And you can see the bend in it. Maybe you can't, but it just, it bent this already. And I had to hit it with a hammer to straighten it out a little bit. So I'm going to have to go to Tractor Supply and find me a nice long lag bolt about the same size as this one. And I'll drill out the template spot here, here, here. So I have a nice long bolt that goes through that's more reliable for uh, my needs. But other than that, it's pretty good design. Uh, I was gonna email them saying, oh, you're missing a, uh, a lag bolt, but once I got it all put together, it made sense. It's like, you know, amazing if you read the instructions and pay attention. But, uh, and I've, I tested it out and it didn't work too hot. And I remembered I hadn't put my radials on uh, counterpoise wires, as they call them. And I just added a fourth for fun to see how it works out. But, uh, but it's a pretty nice design. The, uh, the pole slips down uh, inside here, and it has the, um, the double wall. So the double wall sits right on here. You don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, physically, I could probably... Well, it's, it's clamped down. Physically, you could slide it up. But uh, really nice design, and as you can see, it's kind of wallered out a little bit, but and uh, it, it's leaning, definitely leaning. So once I get it hammered in the way it's supposed to be, I'll put some guys uh, above the center insulator this time. I will not screw myself. I'll get something above the center insulator, and this is supposed to be pretty resilient for fairly high wind. But uh, we have ridiculously high wind out here. But uh, did a beautiful job. The only problem I had was I was out here in the middle of the night the other day. I, uh, doing the, uh, the coax connections here. And this is uh, not RG8. This is RG8X, the black side. This is their version of it or whatever. But uh, you have to have some reducers, these little piece right here. And the same on the other side, the little reducers. And I had uh, a bunch of reducers for RG58 or 59. But uh, these two I had to scavenge from some old connectors. So I was, I was rushing last night with a torch trying to unsolder stuff and <laughs> whatnot and burn my finger. And, but anyway, it's uh, up and functional. And uh, did a nice job. Make some nice contacts last night. It's a little noisy on, uh, of course, it's vertically polarized compared to my, uh, compared to my uh, 80 meter uh, dipole, which is 
you can't really see, but it's 80 meter dipole up. I got up at about 60 foot now, doing a beautiful job. But uh, that's the story of that. Oh, well, and this is the old tilt over mount that I had. And uh, minus that, it's all rusted out. It was just angle iron. And I had actually drilled a hole through the. Uh, see, so come over here and see it. I'd actually drilled a hole through the, through the here. Well, it was further up. To make my tilt over mount, and then I used all thread, and that worked great till my guy broke, and when it slingshotted, it cracked it where you see that goofy little connector there. And at that point, I decided to uh, to do it proper. But, uh, so I may use this other coax for some other fun project. But since I've got you here for five more minutes, let me come over here and show you my psychotic uh, relay box assembly that I'll probably never use. I built this uh, on a lark, and it kept me busy for a couple hours. Um, this uh, relay box assembly was uh, intended to short, uh, let me back up, on this tower I have a uh, an antenna rotator which is like eight conductor I think, seven or eight conductor and I have a coax switch which uh, switches, I have one coax from the house, comes out and controls uh, five different feed lines so the purpose of this is that when I be able to flip a switch in the house and it would take all the eight conductors off that and all the con eight conductors off of the coax relay switch and short them to ground on the tower for uh, surge arresting lightning type protection. I may not use it because, uh, well look at it, it's a rat's nest and it's almost like asking for trouble. Uh, I did a good job it's pretty solid, the relays are excellent, but I'm debating whether or not I should actually even bother using it because there's so much opportunity for failure in this beautifully <laughs> uh, large conglomerate mess, but uh, it was fun to build. Uh, uh, other than that, I don't know, so there's some bees in there, and he's not very happy, so... Uh, and I can put little fuses in there to protect stuff, but so that's the story there. Um, not much else to say. I don't know if I showed you if I've got a couple of more minutes before my 10 minutes are up. This is my uh, beam, my Force 12 multiband beam, which is busted actually. It's in two sections. You can't see the X section section over. So it's like 29 or 32 foot long. And it covers uh, 10 meters through uh, 20 meters, including the work bands. And, uh, and you can see how it's bent there. And the, the base plate, I'm sorry, the mounting plates warped. Uh, when it hit the ground, it hit it pretty hard. It, it twisted the plate up and bent that and bent some elements. And uh, things here's the, the busted pieces over here. Uh, clean snapped, clean snapped uh, two inch, two inch uh, piping. So I'm afraid to ask the guys at Force 12 how much it's going to cost for a new boom and the elements, since the new antenna, brand new, sells for like uh, 2,500 bucks or something. I think it was 1,200 when I bought the antenna originally. <sighs> it's only money, right? Anyway, that's the uh, antenna update, and you can see how it's leaning from there. So we'll straighten that up tomorrow, and I'll see about getting it guide. My brother's supposedly coming over too early for me, and we're going to work on the uh, back porch project again. Anyway, that's the update. I'll uh, send this off, and hope everybody's having a great weekend, and I will talk to you all later. Thanks. Bye.